Hello, and thank you for watching this video on the Care Center. My name is Christina Hall, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. This video will review the Care Center services, programs, and events available to UNLV, NSC, and CSN students, faculty, and staff. We will also be talking about how you can refer students to our office. By the end of this video, you should be able to recognize the impact of trauma on the student experience, recognize how to connect students with their services in a meaningful way, and identify care center direct services and educational programs. So let's get started. The Care Center offers confidential virtual support services to members of not only UNLV, but also NSC and CSN communities. We provide direct service, holistic healing workshops, campus education and awareness events to students, faculty, and staff, especially who are impacted by power-based personal violence. And power-based personal violence is an umbrella term for certain behaviors. The behaviors that we deal with most often at our office is sexual violence, relationship violence, family violence, and stalking, especially in relation to intimate partner violence. So in order to understand what we do, first we have to understand what trauma is and what it means that our office and services are trauma-informed, because this is one of the main frameworks or lenses in which our office strives to operate. Trauma is any experience that causes physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, or social harm. It can include power-based violence, just like the types of violence I mentioned during the previous slide. Trauma can also result from adverse childhood experiences or childhood trauma. Childhood trauma could be emotional, physical, or sexual abuse, neglect, witnessing violence, and other traumatic experiences in childhood. A person can also experience trauma from the loss of a loved one, or is most commonly talked about when experiencing war and combat. Specifically, our office works with students, staff, and faculty who've experienced power-based violence, which we just established as a type of trauma. But what is power-based violence? What does that mean? Power-based violence describes actions and behaviors intended to control, intimidate, and otherwise diminish a person's autonomy. It's in its name. At its core, it's all about power and control. It is one person's attempt to assert power and control over another person, often through violence, manipulative tactics, or even by using their positional power to cause harm. There are a couple of things that we know about power-based violence. The first is that anyone can be affected by power-based violence. Power-based violence can affect your physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and overall well-being. It impacts how you show up at school, work, and life. And we also know that populations that have been systemically marginalized experience distinct barriers to accessing services and resources. Power-based violence can also happen in the workplace and within institutions. And this is a lot of information. And we don't expect you to be expert at identifying power-based violence. So if you suspect that a situation may be power-based violence, you can always reach out to us and our advocates can assist you in identifying if the situation may fall under the umbrella of power-based violence and whether it is something that our office can assist with. So now that we've established what trauma is and what power-based violence is, let's discuss the impact that these experiences have on our students and why connecting them with our services is, a, is just vital to their overall well-being and success. First, understanding the impacts of trauma means looking at the neurobiology of trauma, or said another way, means having a basic understanding of how trauma impacts the human brain. So as you can see in this image, experiencing trauma impacts three primary areas of our brain. The first is the neocortex. This is our thinking brain. It controls decision-making, learning, planning, regulation, creativity, and reflection. The limbic area of our brain is also impacted. This is our emotional brain. It controls feeling, connection, remembering, memory, all of those things lie in the limbic brain. The third area of the brain is the reptilian brain. This is our survival brain. We've all heard of the fight, flight, or freeze responses. Those are governed in this area of the brain. Fear, stress, and self-protection all lie here. So if we consider these areas of the brain and how students use them, the ways that trauma can show up in the student experience could be in meeting deadlines. It could be in recalling information during class or exams. It can show up in regulating the stress and anxiety that comes from university expectations. 
It can show up in day-to-day -day social interactions with peers and faculty and staff. It's also important for us to remember that even knowing this information about how trauma impacts the brain, there is no normal way for a student to react to the impacts of trauma. Every person is different. Every person reacts to trauma differently. Um, and so it's important to keep that in mind. So now that we have a better understanding of what trauma is and the ways in which it might show up in the student's experience, let's discuss how to support students who disclose concerning information, such as traumatic experience and power-based violence. First of all, if someone does come to you with this type of information, it probably means that they feel comfortable enough with you and trust you enough to share their truth. That means that you have created a safe space for that trust to be possible. So you are already doing a great job. No matter what, it can still be surprising, stressful, or even overwhelming when a student discloses information to you that has you concerned for their safety. It's normal to feel any range of emotions when a disclosure occurs, especially since, more often than not, it's somebody that you have a relationship with, you know and care about. So we're going to provide you with some quick, easy to remember steps on what to do when that happens. The first is to recognize it's to recognize when a student discloses a traumatic experience, whether it happened recently or a long time ago, this information is sensitive and should be regarded as sensitive and vulnerable. We encourage you to approach that with care, understanding that. The second is to respond, but don't investigate. It's okay to validate their experiences and feelings, but when a student discloses this information, it's inappropriate for you to try to gain more information about the experience unless you are an investigator or advocate and acting in that capacity. Doing so could be received as an invasion of privacy. It's best to give them options, which takes us to our third step, and that is to give resources. A student-centered approach to safety and well-being is to respect autonomy and give options. In power-based violence, the power has been taken away from a person, and the best way we can give that back is to give them options and choices of things that they can choose of what they want to do next. Empowering students with information and support can help a lot in a student's journey. So this is a great example of a faculty email response after a student disclosed the experience of power-based violence in a classroom assignment. And this is what the, the faculty wrote. Thank you for trusting me with your truth. The university has resources for you. As faculty, I'm required to share this information with offices dedicated to supporting students. Can we work together in connecting you with the care center or UNLV support team services? So obviously this example is one from faculty at UNLV, but instead of UNLV support team, it might be the care team at NSE or any student support office specific to your institution. And if you were the recipient of this email, how would you feel? I imagine you might feel supportive, valued, trusted, and even empowered to move forward with accessing resources. And although it's normal that not every student will react in that way or feel that way, the likelihood increases greatly when we respond with such care like in this email and response. And since we spoke about giving resources and options, I wanted to share that at the end of this presentation, you will be emailed a quick referral sheet on how to connect students with the Care Center and your institution's student support office. But for now, I encourage you to take a picture or screenshot of this slide to capture our office contact information. And you can also request business cards by emailing us. The Care Center has many programs and services available to students, staff, and faculty who've experienced power-based violence. All of our programs and services are carefully developed through those trauma-informed, healing-centered, and anti-oppression lenses, which we spoke a little bit about what trauma-informed framework might be. Our confidential services are designed to address the power-based violence marginalized identities are desperately at risk of experiencing. We serve any and all individuals who experience power-based violence. So to access our confidential direct services, you can call the CARE line, which is open from Mondays through Fridays from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And you can virtually meet with the confidential care advocate in a previously scheduled appointment or meeting as well. There are a number of things that care advocates can do during a meeting. 
The first is to hold space. This is one of the most important things that advocates can provide. They do this through validating your emotions and experiences. And, is, and there is not often an opportunity for folks to stop for a moment and really feel heard and validated. So this is really valuable. Together with the client, the care advocate explores support networks and healing options. They also ensure personal safety. They can help with assessing your physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual health and safety. And then based on that, create a plan together to identify needs, explore potential resources to meet those needs, and put together a plan for moving forward. We also understand how important self-care is. So care advocates can help provide tools that can help discover what nourishes and supports your overall well-being. And another unique thing that our advocates can do is to provide resources and support as far as academic support. We can help identify your academic needs and connect with the right resources to request adjustments, accommodations, and other support. We can also give information about forensic exams, referrals for STI testing, referrals for therapy, whether on campus or off, a student health center, urgent care, those types of things. We also can help you find funding for housing, food, legal, off-campus therapy, holistic healing services, and other financial resources. And finally, while we know and understand that not everyone wants to formally report what happened to them, and that is okay, we also respect and honor our clients' right to not report to systems that can potentially cause harm. And it is definitely not required to receive services from our office. However, if someone does choose to report, we can help them navigate that process of reporting. And we can also assist with no contact orders, stay away orders, and protective orders. Sometimes it can be hard to identify when someone might want to reach out to the care center. And being an office that supports individuals who've experienced power-based violence, please reach out if you aren't sure if your relationship is healthy, if you have been sexually assaulted, if you don't feel safe at home, school, or work, or if someone is making you feel uncomfortable and scared or won't leave you alone. If you're not sure how to name your experience and want a safe confidential space to talk, all of these reasons are great reasons to reach out to the care center. And we know that experiencing power-based violence can leave long lasting impacts on your mind, body, and spirit. So we have a program called Healing Through Connections that offers holistic healing tools that cultivate safety, connection, and support. We collaborate with community healers to offer educational workshops, outdoor retreats, and digital resources, including the Student's Guide to Radical Healing theme. We encourage you to promote these off offerings and educational workshops to your students and staff whenever they're available. And here's the Student's Guide to Radical Healing theme, which I just mentioned. It's basically a digital choose your own healing adventure designed for you to access from any time and any place. We have carefully curated two volumes, and these are great to send out to any individual you feel may benefit from them, even if they're not affiliated with any institution or, or anything like that, because they can be accessed through our website and anyone can access them. The Care Center strives to end various forms of power-based personal violence, and we can do so by hosting campus-wide awareness engagement events. It's one of the other ways that we do that. We offer presentations you can easily watch on your own or with a group. If you teach a class, you can easily integrate these into any curriculum. So to request a presentation, just visit our website. And the presentations that we provide are, are the Journey to Self-Care, which explores self-care tools for victim survivors of power-based violence. The second presentation that we offer is the power of romance in relationships. This explores elements of a healthy relationship and helps students establish boundaries. And the third is called Let's Talk About Consent. This presentation helps students on campus learn about communication skills that promote a culture of consent. So join us in advocating for increased visibility to the impacts of power-based violence and increased access to trauma-informed and healing center services. And you can do that in a couple of different ways. In October, for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, we have a staff and faculty luncheon on Take Back the Night, which is usually like a student speak out. In April, for Sexual Assault Awareness Month, we have interactive workshops, and we also participate in campus tabling events throughout the year. 
The Care Center also offers a competitive care advocate training institute to students. This training and development program is designed to prepare students for the role of the confidential campus advocate. This includes holding space for clients, ensuring personal safety, identifying needs and possible resources, creating plans together, and educating peers. The Care Advocate Training Institute is an immersive training and professional development program that combines online learning with in-field experience. Each cohort participates in a wide range of supervised professional activities within a major campus-based advocacy center here at the Care Center. This is a paid opportunity for students interested in developing a career in human services, public health, social work, and public administration, to name a few. The care advocates are the confidential peer support individuals who provide our intake for direct services and campus education programs. Confidential campus advocates are required to protect students' privacy and confidential information, and therefore do not report anything to, as a student says to the university Title IX or campus police. Exceptions to confidentiality are only if a student reveals abuse and neglect of a child, including oneself, if the student is under the age of 18, or of an elderly or, dis or adult or an adult with disabilities. So if you're interested, we will be accepting applications for the new care advocate cohort in, in the spring uh, each year. And in order to do that, you need to fill out an application, pass the interview process, complete the online training, pass the final exam, and commit to a year of service, which would usually mean fall, spring, and summer semesters. Finally, the best way to learn about our services and upcoming programs, whether for yourself or to share with your students or staff, is to stay connected with us. And we are on all platforms. Please give us a follow. Thank you so much for your time and watching this presentation. And please feel free to reach out to the Care Center if you have any questions about our program.